general superintendent, our father in the Lord, that God will specially use him for all tonight. Not only all, in other locations, in other country, in other continent, that as his ministry unto us and to them, that God will be breaking the heart and the plan of the devil in the life of people. Pray that God will lay his hand on me. God will use him mightily. Open your mouth and pray and talk to God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. So our dear Lord, we thank you because we are God. We come before you tonight to, to receive. Lord, we are asking that more than our expectation here tonight, you will do in our life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you the adoration, bringing us before your presence this evening. Lord, let your name be praised in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord God, I am praying and asking that as we have come before you, I pray that through your word, our hearts will be renewed in Jesus' name. As we go into the section of choruses, I pray that your spirit will come down and the church will be renewed by your spirit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Amen. Glory be to God. Emmanuel. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him, hallelujah, amen, amen. Oh, sing, I sing on, praise the Lord. Oh, sing, I sing on, praise Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the mighty one, praise the Lord, praise the King of kings, praise the Lord of lords, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the mighty one, praise the faithful one, praise the Lord. Oh, sing a sing on, praise the Lord. Oh, sing a sing on, praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the mighty one. Praise the Lord of lords, praise the King of kings. Praise the Holy One, praise the Lord of lords. Praise the faithful one, praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. From east to west, no other God from north to south. I say there is no other God from east to west. No other God. There is no other God from east to west. There is no other God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven, it is settled in heaven, forever, O oh Lord. Mm. 
He's my everything. He's my all. He's my everything, but great or small. He gave his life for me, made everything new. He is my everything. He is my all. Though some may tell me, though some may say, who is this Jesus you talk about every day? He's my Savior, made everything new. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my all. He is my everything. He is my holy. He is my everything, both great or small. He gave his life for me. He is my all. He is my everything. He is my all. Made everything new. He is my everything. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice. And it's all thy love to me. But I long to rise in the hands of faith and be closer, drawn to thee, draw me nearer, nearer to the cross where thou wast. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer, nearer. Lift him up, lift him up, still he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Lift him up, oh lift him up, let's lift him up. And I, if I be lifted up, oh, lift him up, lift him up, let's lift him up, still he speaks from eternity. And I, Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus whispers still. Raise the end, support to heaven, by thy grace we will hold the fort. Jesus Hold the fort. On, on what Christian soldiers Marching us to war, looking on to Jesus, who is gone before Christ the royal master, leads against the See? 
soldiers. Looking on to Jesus. On what Christian soldiers? On what Christian? Marching as to war, looking on to Jesus, who is gone. On what Christian soldiers? To hold on to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. And I've gone of God's salvation. And I feel it in my heart. I am determined to hold on to the end. Amen. salvation and I Amen You are especially welcome to tonight Bible study in Jesus name We want to recognize those who are meeting with us for the first time in this place today Today is your first time you are meeting with us. Please, I want to see your hands up. You are there. You are meeting with us for the first time. Please, can I see? Please, can you stand upon your feet? I want to recognize you. Amen. You are specially welcome in Jesus' name. Our GS, our Father in the Lord, is seated here. He is, he is happy you are with us tonight. And I'm praying that God, who brought you here, will bless you tonight mightily in Jesus' name. We are having a important meeting every week. We're having our Monday Bible study quiz we're having tonight. And at the same time, we're having the Thursday revival hour every Thursday. And at the same time, we're having our Sunday worship service every Sunday. The Monday Bible study we're having tonight starts, commence every Monday by 5.50 in our district. And wherever we have opportunity to be here, we had it at the same time. While we have the Thursday revival and evangelism training service in our district as well, it is a time your needs are prayed for and your needs are met by the grace of God. Every Thursday, we meet by 6.30 or in some districts, 6 o'clock. So as we meet with all, in all these meetings, I'm believing God you will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. And on Sunday, we have our Sunday devotional worship service. The time is 7.45 every Sunday in our district. And uh, every fortnight, we meet here when the occasion permits. So in all this meeting, please, we are pleading with you, don't miss any of them. And as we meet with all, the Almighty God will pour his blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Our usher are by your side. They will have his plea to give to you. Please collect it. Get, or get, give us the, the, all the information about yourself, your house address, your phone number, so that we can reach you and we can help you further after today. I'm praying God will bless you as you come today in Jesus' name. All right, so as we sing together. From gospel hymns and songs, number 105. Gospel hymns and songs, 105. I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed this name to bear. I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian. I'll take him 
with me anywhere. I'll tell the world how Jesus saved me and how he gave me a life brand new. And I know that if you trust him, that all he gave me, he'll give to you. I'll tell the world that he is my savior. No other one can love me so. My life, my all is his forever. And where he leads me, I will go. I'll tell the world that he is coming. It may be near or far away, but we must live as if his coming will be tomorrow or today. For when he comes and life is over, for those who love him, there's more to be. Eyes have never seen the wonders that he is preparing for you and for me. Who tell the world that we are Christian, be not ashamed, his name to bear. Who tell the world that you are Christian and take him with you everywhere.
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The second book of Moses, called Exodus, chapter 26. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen, and blue and purple and scarlet. With cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the selvage in the coupling, and likewise shalt thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the couplings of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another. And thou shalt make fifty tatches of gold, and couple the curtains together with the tatches, and it shall be one tabernacle. And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle. Eleven curtains shalt thou make. The length of one curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and the eleven curtains shall be all of one measure. And thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves, and shalt double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling, and fifty loops in the edge of the curtain which coupleth the second. And thou shalt make fifty tatches of brass, and put the tatches into the loops, and couple the tent together, that it may be one. And the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent the half curtain that remaineth shall hang over the back side of the tabernacle. And a cubit on the one side, and a cubit on the other side of that which remaineth in the length of the curtains of the tent, it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. And thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram's skins dyed red, and a covering above of badger's skins. And thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up, Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Two tenons shall there be in one board, set in order one against another. Thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle twenty boards on the south side southward. And thou shalt make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards. Two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, there shall be twenty boards. And there are forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. 
And for the sides of the tabernacle westward thou shalt make six boards, and two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they shall be coupled together beneath, and they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto one ring. Thus shall it be for them both, they shall be for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards, and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And thou shalt make bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle, for the two sides westward. And the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from end to end. And thou shalt overlay the boards with gold, and make their rings of gold for places for the bars. And thou shalt overlay the bars with gold. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the mount. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work. With cherubims shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches, that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. And thou shalt set the table without the veil, and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. And thou shalt make an hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen, wrought with needlework. And thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And their hooks shall be of gold, and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them. Chapter 27 And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes, and his shovels, and his basins, and his flesh hooks, and his fire pans. All the vessels thereof thou shalt make of brass. And thou shalt make for it a grate of network of brass. And upon the net shalt thou make four brazen rings in the four corners thereof. And thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath, that the net may be even to the midst of the altar. And thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with brass. And the staves shall be put into the rings, and the staves shall be upon the two sides of the altar to bear it. Hollow with boards shalt thou make it. As it was showed thee in the mount, so shall they make it. And thou shalt make the court of the tabernacle. For the south side southward there shall be hangings for the court of fine twined linen of an hundred cubits long for one side. And the twenty pillars thereof and their twenty sockets shall be of brass. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets shall be of silver. And likewise for the north side in length there shall be hangings of an hundred cubits long and his twenty pillars and their twenty sockets of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the breadth of the court on the west side shall be hangings of fifty cubits their pillars ten, and their sockets ten. And the breadth of the court on the east side, eastward, shall be fifty cubits. The hangings of one side of the gate shall be fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And on the other side shall be hangings fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the gate of the court shall be an hanging of twenty cubits, of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework. And their pillars shall be four, and their sockets four. All the pillars round about the court shall be filleted with silver. Their hooks shall be of silver, and their sockets of brass. The length of the court shall be an hundred cubits, and the breadth fifty everywhere, and the height five cubits of fine twined linen, and their sockets of brass. All the vessels of the tabernacle, and all the service thereof, and all the pins thereof, and all the pins of the court shall be of brass. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. In the tabernacle of the congregation, without the veil which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel.
you have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We we'll remain standing as we collect our tithe and offering now. I read for Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Be ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I would not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out the blessing that there shall be no room enough to receive it. So, your money you have in your purse, in your box, raise it up as we pray. Our Father, we thank you for the offering of our brethren. They want to give part of what we are giving to them to you. Lord, as they drop you, we pray you will bless them and return in Jesus' name. In line with your ways, I'm praying that you fulfill it in their life as they give to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. So please drop it in the bag of our brethren and our leaders that are passing the bus around you there. Drop it quickly. I want the Lord to be what you want me to. I want to find the center of your will. I want to see much less of me and more the Lord of you. Glorified in every.
I'll bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
the Spirit came and everyone was healed. Lost and the rest, for out of Spirit, let the fire fall, feed us one and all, for the fresh and
two seasons of men receiving astonishing miracles. Women reunited with the joy they once lost. You three energized and children blessed beyond measure. And today the heavens are still open. If you know that the heavens will open upon you, miracles will come upon your life in Jesus' name. When God's servant, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui, prays, Long standing chains are broken. There is freedom even now as we begin season three. Praise the Lord! Before the crusade, I've been a drug addict for 34 years. I've been addicted to tobacco. I couldn't just stop it on my own, but glory be to God Almighty, who made it possible for me to attend that crusade. Immediately I heard that message, I started crying. The, it was like a yoke was broken in the inside of me. Jesus had defeated you. That was how I became free. And throughout 2022, there was nothing like tobacco, even up till now. Praise the Lord! The glory of God will come upon your life. The wonders of God will come upon your life. And all those who are here, you are here with your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, everything you desire. The Lord is pouring the blessing of God upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Supernatural freedom through Christ. Live from Charles de Gaulle Stadium, the Republic of Benin. A French-speaking West African country with its capital in Porto Novo. 22nd to 27th June, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily. Sunday service at 0700 hours GMT. And that's not all. There will be ministers, church workers and professionals conference with a theme. Fulfilling the ministry with heaven in view. Teenagers, campus students and young adults will be inspired to arise and shine at Impact Academy. Ministry is God's servant. The convener of GCK. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui. With global choir ministering from across the world and special guest music ministration by Dan Luten. Broadcast to the world live via satellite, radio and television, and all our social media platforms. GCK Season 3. Your time has come. GCK, the gospel to every creature. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Look at what Jesus said. He's not talking about your literal hand. He's talking about somebody as useful as your hand. He's talking about somebody as skillful as your hand. He's talking about somebody as profitable to you as your hand is profitable in earthly things is profitable for earthly profit is profitable for earthly progress but he wants you to compromise and he has an oppressive nature that he will push you if you don't he'll say come on here don't you know he's talking to you don't you know my authority 
Don't know, you know the power I have? I told you to rebel. I told you to disobey. I told you to disregard the word of God. I told you to forget all their preaching and listen to me and do evil. And you didn't do it. Don't you know my power? Somebody who is so powerful and skillful and useful as your hand, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It's not talking about your foot, your literal foot. It's talking about the people who make you make progress. They are on the move and they carry you along. Maybe with money, maybe with encouragement. And they are the people that move you forward in every way. And they move your strategy, and they move your vision, and they move your dream forward. Maybe your dreams like Joseph. The dream of your childhood and the dream of your early years. And this person will help you to move forward in fulfilling that dream. The only condition is he'll make you compromise. He'll put pressure on you to compromise. It will make you not to stand on that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It will be angry at you, and it will teach you how to get angry. It will do things that will hinder you from getting to heaven. A person like that, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life. That is your childhood dreams you cannot fulfill because the person to move you on is not able to help you, is not willing to help you, except your compromise. Forget dream, forget ambition, forget progress. Getting to heaven is the number one in your life. What shall you profit a man if he gained the whole world and he loses his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's why it says, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter all into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. I pray God will help you. That's what he's talking about, that you separate, you determine, and you decide, my help will come from God. And if may be delayed a little, but I have faith in God, you will not die of hunger. But you know, there's somebody who is so close to you, precious to you, profitable to you. And you always think of, you know, I can't make it in life if uh, she is not by my side. I can't make it in life if she is not uh, helping me or he is not helping me. And because of that, you are wedded to sin. You are married to sin. You are married to evil. You are yoked with evil. I pray you will not die in that condition. Nobody knows your temptation like yourself. Nobody knows your predicament like you yourself. Objects of sin, objects of temptation, objects of compromise, objects of falling, objects that will hinder you. Objects that will not allow you to have real commitment to the truth and real commitment to holiness. Objects that will lead you astray. Objects that will make you fall into error or falsehood or sin or deception or into compromise. You will cut them off in Jesus' name. And when you do, you do it with determination. And you do it with firmness that this will not pull me to hell. You will not get to hell. Let's rise up now and take what we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Amen. You will not get to hell. I will not get to hell. And if that will happen, you need to pray. It is time to pray now. Wherever you are, open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord.
Tonight we have had the word of God. And these, these were the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, if your right hand will cause it to offend, cut it off. And tonight you must examine your life and see that man, that woman, that is like a right hand in your life, that is skillful, profitable, useful, and yet that individual will not allow you to obey the Lord, will not allow you to serve the Lord, will not allow you to live a righteous life. You must pray for grace and pray for strength, for divine enablement to cut off from that man, to cut off from that woman. Tonight, you have heard the word of the Lord that if that individual is allowed in your life, he will make you to go to hell. She can make you to go to hell. And that's why you have to pray. Don't sell righteousness for silver. And don't replace the Savior with a sponsor. You need to pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Maybe you are saying, if this person is not in my life, if he's not helping me, then I can't achieve my dream. You must remember that God is your help. Your help will come from God. Even if there is going to be a little delay, it is better to be hungry than to put your trust in man. The man that will not allow you to serve God. Are you wedded to sin? Married to sin? Because of somebody that will not allow you to live the life. You must pray tonight and ask God for grace. You must pray and ask God for divine enablement. So that you will serve the Lord in righteousness. Even if that person is as important as your food that will help you to realize your dream, to realize your goal. If that man is a hindrance to your spiritual life, you have to pray tonight. You have to tell the Lord, Oh Lord, give me grace to cut off. Give me grace to dissociate myself from this person. Because the Bible said, What shall he profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose is so. Pray. You know you are object of temptation. You know you are object of compromise. Object of falling. Tonight you must ask the Lord to help you. You will not continue in sin. You will not continue to fall. Because if you die in this condition of being wedded to sin, being married to sin, being entangled to sin, you will go to hell. And you must pray and cut off. Pray for grace. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray this time and commit our Father in the Lord into the hands of God. The Lord has used him to minister to us and he will still preach to us in the Bible study. Pray for grace. Pray for divine enablement. Let's also pray for Benedictine. As the program is coming, the Lord will draw multitude into the kingdom of God. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Almighty Father, we want to thank you. We want to appreciate you for what our ears are hearing. We are praying for grace that you will help us to make heaven. We pray as many that are in bondage, bondage to man, bondage to women. I pray tonight with what they have had. You will give them the grace to cut off and they will cut off in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the whole church said, Amen. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for everything we have learned already. We pray, Lord, that all these things will be reaching on the table of every heart. And Lord, the passion the fire, the fervency, the pursuit, you grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. 
we pray that any passion we have lost any fire we have lost any commitment we have lost you restore to everyone abundantly in jesus name open the pages of the scriptures to everyone even tonight and we pray that the grace to abide in the word to live like the word teaches us and to move on in everything every action according to your word your grant to every one of us in jesus name members ministers parents children long-time believers and newcomers we pray we'll follow your word step by step day after day in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray you must give me another amen before you sit down god bless you we're coming to galatians chapter 2 and today we're looking at verses 11 12 13 and 14 galatians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 11 but when peter was come to antioch i withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed and then in verse 12 it says for before that certain came from james he did eat with the gentiles but when they were come he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision then in verse 13 and the other jews dissembled likewise with him in so much that barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation now in verse 14 but when i saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel i said unto peter before them all if thou being a jew leavest after the manner of the gentiles and not as do the jews why compellest thou the gentiles to live as do the jews we thank the lord for the passage of scripture we're looking at today it's one of the evidences that the bible is the word of god normally when you write the story the history of great men and you write their autobiography you do not put some of these things there that might bring them to bad light why should there be any disagreement between barnabas and paul that's written the bible why should there be any kind of dissembling or dissimulation in the action of peter that's written in the bible how should paul confront peter because of what he has done that's written in the bible and we need to remember that whatsoever things were written at all time they were written for our learning that we through the comfort and the patience of scriptures might have hope so today we're looking at preserving the truth of the gospel at all costs preserving and there is what paul the apostle did he saw that the truth of the gospel was being turned upside down he saw that the truth of the gospel was being eroded into and he wanted and he had to defend the gospel the truth of the gospel why do we have to preserve the truth of the gospel because if the gospel is changed a mutilated gospel cannot save if the gospel is changed a modified gospel cannot save if the gospel is changed a watered down gospel cannot save that's the reason why because paul the apostle 
was interested in the salvation of people, both Jews and Gentiles. So he had to defend the truth of the gospel, preserve the truth of the gospel, so that this gospel will remain as God has given us. And it remains as God has given us, then people will hear the gospel, the true gospel, the perfect gospel, the heavenly gospel, the saving gospel, the transforming gospel, and the gospel that changes not. And so those who hear will be able to respond to that gospel. They will give their lives to the Lord and they will be saved as it was then. So it should be today that every one of us ministers, every one of us preachers, every one of us leaders, every one of us soul winners should preserve the truth of the gospel at all costs. Preserving the truth of the gospel at all costs. There are three things we're looking at today in the message. Number one, the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation. That's what happened to Peter. He was a pillar in the kingdom, a pillar in the church, a pillar in the New Testament. And now the pillar was shifting from the foundation and that's very dangerous and the same thing with us today any preacher well-known preacher any preacher a preacher that is known all over the world or maybe all over our nation maybe all over our state maybe in our church if it sheets from the foundation that's very dangerous because many will backslide and many will lose their faith and their hope in the lord the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation number two the dissembly of partners shaking by fear after peter kind of dissembled he left the place where he was before when those jews came from james Barnabas and others, they also dissembled with him. And they said, if Peter is afraid of those people coming from Jerusalem, who am I? And so we have the dissembling of partners shaken by fear. Fear of man is very, very dangerous. The fear of man will bring a snare. The fear of a man, a woman, high people, great people, forceful people, the fear of their face and the fear of their comment. What will they say? What will they do? How will they react? How will they respond? That fear, the fear of anyone in our lives will bring us near and lead us astray. And not only lead us astray, a leader's sin it's a leading sin. It will lead other people astray to the dissembling of partners shaken by fear. Number three, the defense by Paul. Steadfast in the faith. The defense by Paul. Paul the apostle. Thank God we have a person like Paul the apostle that when everybody was going the other direction, he could stand alone and he could stand for the truth. Thank God today you can be a man like that because if everybody fell, who will stand? If everybody compromised, who will be conqueror? If everybody went astray, who will stand on the truth of the word of God? It's good for you in the time of the Old Testament. There was a Daniel, a Daniel that was stand alone. And then his three companions and friends go follow him. In the time of the New Testament, we have this man, Paul the Apostle, and he could stand. And because he stood, the word is now preserved for us. I pray the Lord will make a Paul out of you. And make you stand whatever is happening around you in Jesus name the defense by Paul steadfast in the faith let's come to number one number one we have the danger of pillars shifting 
from the foundation three things we're looking at here number one the immutability of the saving pillar of truth there's the pillar of truth apart from a human being apart from a preacher apart from an apostle being a pillar the pillar of truth that's the pillar on which we build the temple of truth and we build everything we want to build because the temple of truth the truth of the gospel must stand on a pillar the immutability of the saving pillar of truth number two the instability of some pillars in the temple the temple is the church the temple is the whole thing that we have under the saving grace of god and there are some of the pillars there some of the preachers there some of the pastors there some of the people there that were shaking they were unstable unstable as water thou shalt not excel the instability of some pillars in the temple number three the importance of steadfast perseverance without timidity the importance of holding on and standing fast and remaining solid unshakable steadfast perseverance without timidity let's look at number one is the immutability of the saving pillar of truth we're told in first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 first timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 15 but if i tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of god which is the church of the living god the pillar and ground of truth the church of the living god the pillar and the ground of truth if the church is anything at all the church should be holding forth and holding out the truth of the gospel and the church then becomes the depository becomes the place where you deposit the truth the whole truth and if you're looking for the truth you come to the church and the church is the pillar of truth and is the ground of truth and those who are preachers then in the church must stand like pillars and stand for the truth of the word of god in jeremiah chapter 1 reading from verse 9 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 then the lord put forth a sand and he touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth i have put my words in thy mouth i have put the perfect word i have put the fullness of the word i put the complete revelation in your mouth i have put my words in thy mouth what did that make jeremiah having the truth loving the truth possessing the truth preaching the truth announcing the truth putting forth the truth of the word of god look at verse 18 in verse 18 for behold i have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar without the truth without the gospel jeremiah could not be a pillar without the truth without the revelation peter could not be a pillar what makes anyone a dependable pillar what makes anyone a standing pillar what makes anyone a pillar to be reckoned with in the church of the living god is that he has the truth the true gospel the word of god the gospel and he retains and he holds on to that truth and the lord said for behold i have made thee 
this day a defense city and an iron pillar and bracing walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Let's come to First Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builders thereon but let every man take heed how he builders thereon look at verse 11 in verse 11 it tells us for all the foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is christ jesus is that foundation in christ Christ as Savior, Christ alone without circumcision, Christ as sanctifier, Christ alone without the ceremony of the Old Testament, Christ the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, Christ alone without drinking from river Jordan, Christ the healer, Christ alone without all the herbs and everything, Christ the redeemer, Christ the redeemer without other people becoming a co-redemptor or redeemer with him, Christ. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And then we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 19. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, depart from corruption, depart from corrupting the word of God, and depart from corrupting their own lives, the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. Let's come to number two now. Number two, the instability of some pillars in the temple. The instability of some pillars in the temple. We're coming to Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was to him to the face because he was to be blamed. That wasn't expected of Peter. The same thing with us, any of us who are pastors, who are preachers, who are overseers, who are leaders, who are workers, and who have been taught the truth. The Lord expects that we'll stand by the truth, stand for the truth, stand for the truth, and present the truth at every opportunity to everyone we come across. But as it was in the Old Testament, it also spilled over to the New Testament. You remember Ophni and Phinehas? They derailed. You remember Nadab and Abihu? They derailed. You remember Aaron? He didn't stand on the word, and the people were led into idolatry. You remember many people that have gone away from the truth of the word, and now we come to the New Testament. And Peter himself, writing his epistle, second epistle of Peter, chapter 2, he said, There were false prophets in those days, and there shall be false teachers among you. Unfortunately, Peter himself fell into that kind of situation. It was a situation of compromise, a situation of not being strong, a situation of fearing man more than the Messiah and fearing the people around him more than the Lord God of heaven. Now, to point accusing finger to Peter is one thing, 
and for you to understand in your own moment of confrontation in your own moment of uh, when people come uh, that you respect and you honor and then you have a stand to take and you have the words to defend for you to be able to stand it will take really a good experience of salvation a good experience of sanctification a good experience of baptism and power and courage and boldness in the holy ghost but now we're told about peter that he was to be blamed look at verse 12 in verse 12 for before that certain came from james that's james in jerusalem he did eat with the gentiles he did eat with the gentiles no big deal already when god called peter to the house of cornelius already he was there and he spent some days of them he slept in the house they provided gentiles he ate the food they provided and they knew already that the lord had broken down that middle wall of partition they knew already that peter went to the house of cornelius and he ate there they even challenged him look at acts chapter 11 reading from verse 2 acts chapter 11 we're reading from verse 2 it says there and when peter was come unto jerusalem they that were of the circumcision contended with him what a pity they contended about a non-essential they contended about eating food they contended about what goes in and then will you pass it out and jesus had told them before he left he said it is not what enters into the man like food like drink that corrupts the man defiles the man it is what comes out of the man now they challenged him they said peter well, what have you done you've gone to the uncircumcised gentiles and you have eaten with them look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says saying thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them in verse 4 verse 4 tells us what peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them look at verse 8 in verse 8 but i said not so lord for nothing common or unclean as at any time entered into my mouth verse 9 and then it says in verse 9 but the voice answered me again from heaven that should have settled it once and forever the voice answered me again from heaven what god has cleansed that call not thou come on then in verse 10 in verse 10 and this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven and then in verse 11 it says in verse 11 and behold immediately there were three men already come unto the house where i was sent from caesarea unto me verse 12